Hey everyone, I thought I'd make this little theory video about um about Five Minutes of Freddy's and you know the new collab for Dead by Daylight. My predictions on it. These are my predictions, so take them with a grain of salt. And some of my, and my uh, things I'm gonna say because this does have to do with the game Into the Pit, so. Just, just let it be. Just letting you guys let it be known. Okay, my first theory um, has to do with Eleanor from To Be Beautiful. Now we all, I'm go Now I thought that Eleanor from To Be Beautiful was just a machine. It was just a robot that took someone apart, took a person apart, and. You know, trying to make her beautiful. But I noticed from the game, from the end of the pit game, that it's a lot deeper than you realize. My theory with that, with this, now this is my first theory. I have like a few more to go off of that are not related to FNAF, so let me continue here. I think that, um, after FNAF 6, now you hear me out, after FNAF 6, Elizabeth Afton's body didn't burn in the fire. It moved on to the next, to the next animatronic. Basically, kind of like the missing children's in incident victims, or that C, uh, I don't know how to say that, you know, the... The initials for that, anyway. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is that Eleanor may be Elizabeth Afton. Eleanor might be Elizabeth Afton. Not her entirely, but like a small portion of Elizabeth Afton might be inside of Eleanor. Because, after all, Afton was experimenting with Remnant. So it does make sense. It does stand to reason that oof, Pablo slash Wheeljack out of the way. It does stand to reason that after Scrap Baby fell, Elizabeth Afton's soul after the fire would have transitioned out of Scrap Baby into Eleanor. Permanently. Now, before you go writing in the comments saying, that doesn't make sense to the lore, it might, it might make sense. Here's why I think that. Here's why I think so. Because if you go back to, if you look at, if you look at Riot Host's theory about Molden Freddy, how he's dripping remnant from his mouth, yes, he does. That could have played a key role in that. When Molten Freddy basically, because we don't know, we don't know what happened to the animatronics. They never show us clear. It just fades to black in the game. We don't have a clear understanding as to what actually happened to the animatronics. Did they explode? Did they just fall to the ground? Did they get crushed? They don't. Scott's game doesn't deliberately tell you that. It doesn't. We are, we, all these years we've been left to believe that the animatronics were crushed or burned. Yeah. All these years we were led to believe that the animatronics from FNAF 6 were either crushed or burned. That may be, that may be wrong. Because if you look at, uh, security breach. You see no remains of the other animatronics. You don't even see Afton's endo. That's how, that's how deep this theory is. You don't even see an endo. You don't see the Spring Bonnie endo that was left behind after Afton's defeat. After Afton was burned alive. And what's interesting is... In um, 
the into the pit game, there's an Easter egg you can trigger if you turn if you type in a certain number, like a phone number in the game. It does the spring lock failure from FNAF three. So this is where my theory starts. Into the pit does it take place in the future? It doesn't. It take as we're as we were led to believe. It doesn't take place in the future like we're led to believe. It takes place after FNAF 6. And that's the reason why the town in Into the Pit is dead. That's why Oswald says that his hometown is dead. It's barren. There's nothing open. There's things that are open. That are open, still open, that are closing and all that. That might be Henry's doing. Henry must have orchestrated something with the mayor of that town in game in the game lore to make it to where no restaurants are open, no shops, animatronic things, mills, anything. Making it that's why I, I think in the end speech he says this ends for all of us, as in literally. It, and he's trying to end the whole town. He's trying to end the whole town. Henry was trying to end Afton. So if you take him having, having, being emotionally driven to Afton to try to kill Afton, like he's been doing and like he was trying to do throughout the games, you can draw that to into the pit. If you draw that connection to it, into into the pit from FNAF 6 to, in, to into the pit, it makes total sense on why it's dead. The fire didn't stop at at the restaurant, at the FNAF 6 restaurant. It did not stop. It kept going. I I find this so weird that no one's made a theory on that. The fire kept going kept destroying buildings until it couldn't go no more. Yeah. That's what I mean. The fire burned the FNAF 6 restaurant to the ground, but the burrs let it out when the sky, when the ground, the floorboards of the pizzeria caved in, it let the fire out. It let it out. It let it get to the surface. Whilst the animatronics can't. While the animatronics can't. It let that it let the fire go to the surface, but not the animatronics. It burned the animatronics to a crisp. That's why there's rubble at the bottom of that restaurant. The whole restaurant wasn't destroyed. The fire never reached the wood that's in the restaurant. Because I think the animatronics were being closed up, closed in a singular space. Basically, the vents and the whole vent structure were closing. So when Basically, what Henry did is he didn't kill himself. He let the whole labyrinth fall. He let it go. I'm going to assume he had a release button to release the labyrinth. Yeah. This would make sense because you don't see the player walking into the labyrinth. You don't see where they where they originate originally come into the actual metal box. You don't see that because I believe that they're being lowered on a metal chained elevator that is strictly attached to the to the pillars that hold up the restaurant from below the ground. Yeah. Yeah, there are these chain. I think there are these chain. There, were, okay. 
Let me, let me refresh my brain real quick. I think the Labyrinth in FNAF 6 was being held up by chains. Flammable, like, flame, flammable chains that are melted, that can be melt to heat, like, melted when heat is applied to break the chains. Basically, to send Afton and the whole Labyrinth tumbling down into the sinkhole. Yeah. I, that's what I believe is what happened in FNAF 6. Is it is the Labyrinth kept going down and down and down and down and down and down until it hit the bottom. That's why I believe that in FNAF 6 the animatronics may... St I've, I've been telling my friends this, I've been telling everyone this, that those scrap animatronics are somehow still alive. Because it doesn't make sense. Because you don't see them explode. You don't see them come apart. You don't see that. You don't see any of that. They, do, they hide it off screen. Which is why I'm going to say this. We need a game that explores the events of the FNAF games. I hope I wish Scott would make a game series called Five Nights at Freddy's The Week Before. Yes, that's the title of a book, but hey. As in, as in, or should I say, Five Nights at Freddy's The Basically, Five Nights at Freddy's Um Sorry, I'm checking the screen. The the missing pieces. We need a FNAF game called FNAF. A FNAF game series called Five Nights at Freddy's The Missing Pieces. Because we still don't know what happens in between. We don't know what happens in between FNAF 1 and FNAF. In between FNAF 1 to 2. Yes, FNAF 2 and the games may be a prequel, but chill. <laughs> Or FNAF 2 to 3. Or FNAF 3 to 4. Or FNAF 4 to 5. Or FNAF 5. Well, we know what happened in FNAF 5 to 6, of course. But we know that story, but we don't get a bit... We don't get a, pic, a painted picture of actually what happens. Which is why I believe that we need a game series... That shows us stories... In the games that are in the time of Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 6. In between each game. That's what I mean. Like, FNAF 1.2, FNAF 2.3, FNAF 3.4, FNAF 4.5, FNAF 5.6, and then FNAF... Six point U C N six point U or six point seven if you want to get technical. But, but back to my theory. Is what I'm trying to say is that because I've had this thought the, these past few days where I've been thinking what actually happened to Afton? Because in security breach they don't show an endoskeleton. They don't even show a skeleton, to be honest. They don't show any bones, any animatronic parts. They don't even show, like, a chipped tooth out of Scrap Baby's claw. They don't show, like, a tooth out of Molten Freddy or his eye or, you know, Lefty's hat. They don't show any, any reference to those animatronics. I believe that the FNAF games need to literally that this is my this is just my opinion on the FNAF thing on Five Nights at Freddy's. They need to like bring up the scrap animatronics from time to time in the franchise. They really do. They bring up all the originals from FNAF one to three. Well not three, but FNAF one to four at least. 
They skip three. FNAF, well, they showcase FNAF 1 through sister location. That, should I say that? In the FNAF games in the past year, they've done sister location animatronics as reference to those animatronics. They haven't done is reference though the scrap animatronic in full totality. I remember when I was young, I had a, well, I remember when I was younger when before Security Breach came out, I had a theory that the that the pizzeria had an, ex- an explorable outside when it didn't. I thought they were going to have it where the outside is explorable. That, I know that sounds like a lot for an indie dev and a, a game development team to do, but I thought about it as a cool thing. If they did it, because then they could showcase, show what happened to those parts. Because there's a detail that Daco, Vapor, and every other YouTuber who played Five Nights at Freddy's into the pit, they missed some killer's helmet in it. Okay, for people who play, who have played into the pit, okay? Go to the go to the mill and look at the dumpster to your right. The Springtrap's helmet, or should I say, Springtrap's mask, is in the rubble of parts. Literally, his helmet is in there. I've seen it with my two eyes. After this video goes live, I'll pull out a post and take a picture of what I'm talking about. There is this green earless. Helmet that has little streaks of wither on it. That has these streaks on the eyes. uh, Up against its eyes that look like they're withered. You know who that could reference? William Afton, a.k.a. Springtrap. His earless helmet, as I call it. His earless mask is in the rubble of parts in the mill. In the Into the Pit game. Which begs the question, when does Into the Pit take place? They never give us that deli- the derivative answer in the game. But I'm going to assume that Into the Pit, canonically the game, not the, not the book, the game, <laughs> don't want to anger people, okay? I'm not trying to anger anybody, I'm not trying to make you know, I'm just making a theory here. Just making a theory. Don't want to anger anybody from the fans. I'm a fan too, so. But. But I believe. That in Five Nights at Freddy's, Into the Pit. Takes place a day after the fire. So the day after the fire had completely, and I mean completely, settled down. Because if you look at the buildings, they look like they were hit by a tornado. Or hit by a huge, um, what's the word? Wind of fire. Basically, they look, basically the whole town in, into the pit game looked like it was hit by a wall of fire. Or a box of fire, that is. Now, what am I saying by that? If you look at the buildings in the game, it basically sums up what I'm saying. I can't put... I mean, I could put pictures and post, but... I don't want to use Daco's, you know, it, game footage, because I'll probably get sued. By the guy, even though I'm a fan of Daco. He probably would agree. Not that he'll watch this video because he can't because people still I don't know why. Is it the fact that my name is that elusive? Is that why? Like guys, I want a derivative answer about this. Is my name in so like <laughs> so like 
Not like, you know. Is it, is the game, is my like name, my YouTube name, so hidden that I can't be found by anybody? That, because that's what I think. I know this is a theory, but I'm going to go on a rant, on a little bit of a tangent here. About this, because it's been kind of plaguing me. That's why I haven't been really making videos for the last few days. Because I've been kind of, like, complacent about it. So, yeah. I've been making videos lately. I've been complacent about my YouTube name. My, my everything, you know. What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with my channel name? Is my channel name that elusive? That's what my problems are. Because I, I, I have a theory that it's because my name is so elusive and hidden that no one in the YouTube sphere can actually find it in the gaming community. Even though I've been trying to get on the For You page on the recommendeds for a long time. Yeah. But back to my theory. Back to my theory. That was my little tangent. There. But. I'm back. I had to, you know. I had to go help my grandmother with something. But anyway. My theory. Um, is that. What happened to the scrap animatronics. And to the labyrinth. And. The rest and the and when the into the game takes place. Sorry if I look kind of like staggered eyed. I'm kind of in a panic. My my grandmother, you know, went to go take the trash out. So it's kind of you know scaring me. It's scaring me. Okay, it's gonna say that right now, guys. It's scaring me because she's going out there in the rain. I don't know how to feel, guys. I swear. Like I, I, I'm serious. Like her doing that, just just throwing me out of a loop right now. I, I, I can't tell you guys how much how bad this is making me feel right now. But I'm gonna say this. I think that the five minutes of that. The end of the pit game is can is the events after Five Nights at Freddy's Six, or it's a few years after. Shall I put it? It's a few years after FNAF Six, and yeah. 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 It's a few years after, so I'm going to assume that those... Because if you look at some of the characters in the mill into the into the pit game, they look familiar. People said the Bonnie thing on the left beside the dumpster is... I think that's meant to be bon Toy Bonnie. Yeah, the Toy Bonnie from FNAF 2. From Five Nights at Freddy's 2. And there are some animatronic parts that are hard to recognize, but one out of the bunch on the right is easy for me to recognize because it's literally the face. It's literally this face. I'll, I'm going to be right back. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this scene right here. I'll be right back and grab one of my, one of my beloved plushes. That, need, that is deserving of a remake. That's deserving of a remake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this thing. Is this guy. Spring trap. Notice the very tattered eyes. I'm gonna and after this video is done, I'm gonna find a clip to edit in here with a voiceover. 
This this part will be cut out, by the way. Maybe. I may keep it in just because I forget. <laughs> but this is Springtrap from Five Nights at Freddy's 3. And in the mill, this mask is in the pile of trash on the right. There's a light over top of it. It kind of blends in with the dumpsters. You'll have to kind of look hard. You'll have to look very hard and you'll find it. You have to look very hard and you'll find it. It's very hard to spot. I spotted it with bl with blind eyes. But anyway, guys. And, my, and here's... And I'm going to speculate here on what... Okay, this is for Dead by Daylight. So, what I think uh, Spring Boy here, Spring Trap, and Dead by Daylight is going to be a combination of, I can guess what that will be. Spring Trap might be a combination between the Nemesis, the Xenomorph, and, um, let me think, Sonico course, Sonico will be a combination between, between those those three, but, but a couple more. It'll also be a Digibash combo of the shape and the Demogorgon. It, Alien and the Demogorgon combined. But the reason why I said the Nemesis is because he's going to use his, going to have to use his fists. And they have a prestige animation where you know the 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 dem he punches is is that is um literally nemesis does that when he's hitting a survivor he punches the he punches the survivors now here's what I think his palette break animation might be so. Like some killers, they either like kill some like some killers like the xenomorph, where the xenomorph goes like and like thrusts the door open. Well, not three, not 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 that thrusting. Stop it! <laughs> not that thrusting. <laughs> where he kind of just goes and like pushes himself through. He kind of pushes himself through. Springtrap's palette animation will be a mix like that. Will be a mix. A mix of two things. I'll give you a hint here. It'll be a mix between the Nemesis is one where he goes like and punches the door open and the xenomorphs. But it'll take realm it'll take idea an idea from FNAF where they just stand at the door. Here's what Springtrap's animation might be. He opens the door and then tries to elbow the door and that doesn't work. That's what I think his palette break animation will be. Is he tries to open the door, you know, like actually like grab a hold, but he goes like... <sighs> he goes, he like... Okay. Here's an example of what I'm saying. He basically tries to open the door like this, but then goes like and goes <clears throat> when like punches it. He like he tries to open it and th and this him feeling the the door would be a reference to saying to, to one of his voice lines from FNAF six saying saying I knew it was a lie the moment I heard it obviously, but it's intriguing. It would take that intrigue that intriguing and fascination is fa is intrigue is intrigue and fascination kind of ideal idea in play here. It'll put that into perspective. Yes, it'll put that into perspective, and then that's how. 
It'll, it'll, now his palette, now his normal palette break animation will probably be him picking the palette up. He'll probably go like, <sighs> yeah, he'll probably pick it up and go like, <sighs> or he'll do like every other killer, which goes, <sighs> goes <sighs> and breaks it by step by stomping at it, which. In Dead by Daylight, I'm always like, how does that work? <laughs> how does a killer step on a pallet and has meant to work? <laughs> like, if any other killer in the actual, you know, in their movies did that way. <laughs> to a pallet, it wouldn't, it wouldn't break. It'd probably crack, but it wouldn't break. It probably would crack, but not break. Basically, what I'm talking about is that Is that spring to a animation either will be him going like him like doing this kind of motion or him picking the pallet up and it hitting a survivor. Now then now the Badelli fans that may sound overpowered, but it, really it's not. It it'd be an animation that plays. It would have a false sur it have that survivor there as a false dub. Yeah. <sighs> As a false um, stunt double kind of thing. Where that survivor's there, but not there. They receive the damage a little bit. They receive a little tick of the damage. They basically get... Now, I'm going to get into how Springtrap's powers may work in Dead by Daylight. I said that... I said, I'm going to say the exact same thing I said to uh, the Venom Xenomorph. I said this a long time ago. I was fascinated with the idea by that at that time. I still am. Just a little lower since, you know, I didn't really play Dead by Daylight at that time. I posted that. I just made that up. But here is what I'm saying. Here's what I said. I said that... And I quote... I said that Springtrap's power would be like Nemesis kind of, would be kind of like the nemesis. Now, before you go screaming at me saying, how does that meant to work? Nemesis has a tentacle that comes out of his arm. Uh, it'll work in the same way the nemesis is a, his power works, except a little different. So, basically, when Springtrap jump scares you, or one of the phantom stuff scare you, It'll send a preemptive signal and teleport the killer straight to that survivor immediately. Because we don't have a killer that can get to you at all moments in universe yet in Dead by Daylight. We do not have any killers that can just like warp to you. Warp to any generator. Curse any generator. This is a... And this will be... I'm going to talk about that later on in the video. but The idea that I'm trying to say is, is that... <sighs> the idea that I'm trying to say is, is that... The idea I'm trying to say is that... Um... Well... Let me think. Is that, uh... I'm trying to think of it. Dang, I'm trying to think of it. Ugh. Okay. Here's my thought. Here's my thought. Is that spring trap... Here's my idea here. Spring trap in Dead by Daylight will send in a will send a phantom okay let me just move on from what I'm trying to say there um and go back to his power for a minute spring trap power in dead by daylight would be something called would be called jump scare basically he shoots a burst of energy that stuns survivor that like stuns them in with fear that that, like, shocks them with fear. 
it's kind of like um it's kind of like the doctor if the doctor was more intense it's kind of like the doctor if the doctor actually like shocked you in place like you were frozen you had no controls you couldn't move you couldn't do anything but look around yeah that kind of scary that is how I am perceiving this. Yeah. That's how I'm perceiving it. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is, is that um, Springtrap will be able to stun lock you. Not for reals. It'd be kind of like the Sonico effect. Where... When he hits you, it kind of like damages you, but kind of tries to stun you. But this would be a perma stun that would stun you for six to, for thirty seconds, basically where you're immobilized, where you can't move. Now I'm going to talk about how spring trap could work in Dead by Daylight a little bit. Basically. The way he works is... Okay, I'm going to say this. Springtrap will have the ability... Or should I say... I'm, or should I say... I'm going to talk about some of his skins for a minute. I'm going to divert from talking about Springtrap himself, the default skin, talking about some of the skins he has. First of all, I what I want with this Finance of Phrase chapter is that if they do get bring Springtrap into Dead by Daylight, they better do this, do it, do him justice. Because here's what I want: his variants are his skins, and they contain different powers. So the scrap the scrap trap variant for Afton would be would have the ability to grab the survivor to hold the survivor. His power would be to basically control shock the environment. While he's walking, he's detecting audio cues as he walks. So if you blow up a generator, if a generator explodes, and he's like 40 feet way out of view, he'll, it'll sound like it's a lot closer. Basically, I'm saying, basically, okay. Spring traps, scrap traps, um... Power would be, would be to suck survivors toward him. You, and you'll have to complete a scrap mini game, a salvaging mini game, or you instantly die. That may sound overpowered on paper, but it has to be. It's ba- that. Okay. The death, the death amount has to be the certain size or length of the survivor you're playing. So if it's like King, if it's like David King, you'll instantly die. Yeah. Basically, it has to do with the size of the hitbox or the size of the player in general. If the survivor is too big and Fails, they instantly die. No matter how many circ, no, not that. In every circumstance, yeah, yeah, they instantly die. If it's David King or or a Nicholas Cage, and they better have a, a, a an interaction. They better do like the like the Chucky things, is where he says, "I know that guy." I know that guy. Except I want them to get PJ Haywood in and then have him go, I know that guy. I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love that. I'd love it. <laughs> well, basically, what I'm trying to say is that they'll have different abilities, different powers. 
So, Springtrap's next skin, the Yellow Rabbit, would work sort of similar to how he to how the regular version works, except fundamentally different. I'm trying to fake my feet. <sighs> Basically, anyway, sorry, I zoned out. <laughs> and the Yellow Rabbit's power would be he would throw a cupcake out, similar to the Trapper, except way more life-threatening. Basically, the cupcake would work as an active guard, kind of like the Knight, where it, where it looks around the where it looks around the where it stays in one spot but looks around the environment. Kind of goes like. <laughs> That basically making noises just to see if I want to talk about. It'll swivel its cupcake head around and have a, a, a like a, a a shape like that, like a triangle, half a triangle, moving. And if a player's leg or foot or any part, even if an item drops, it will activate it, and the cupcake will actively chase those that survivor. It can't be, and it can't be affected by anything. You can't destroy it. You can't do anything. The only thing you can do is let it run its course until it shuts down. That's the only way to stop this thing. Now I'm going to get to my minor nitpicks about Dead by Daylight at any given time. And I mean it. This feature is the, mo is the, one, of the one of the main features of Dead by Daylight that makes that angers me so much about the game is the freaking flashlights. Springtrap should not be affected by no light at all. Because he doesn't care. He doesn't care. It's the same thing with freaking Z with the Xenomorph in the demo. They do not care about the light. They will kill a person dead if they get spotted in the light. Now, if they release the Death Angels, if they make made a Quiet Place chapter, they have to do the Quiet Place justice. And disable flashlights for that mode so the, the Death Angel can skulk around the map, listening for every star. And since it... Okay. I'm pretty sure the thing's affected by light in some capacity. It's just, it'll be shielded. It's shielded, but... That stuff doesn't really work in Dead by Daylight. I don't want them doing that anymore. The flashlight thing where people just go, click, click, bl I'm going to blind you. <laughs> I will laugh if someone is holding a flashlight running from me a spring trap in Dead by Daylight when it comes out. I will laugh. Because they'll be flashing the flashlight and Like they they would literally run away as soon as they saw that happen. Because there should be a one killer in Dead by Daylight, n n unaffected by flashlights. They can still use the light, of course. It's just the stun doesn't happen. The stun doesn't work at all. In the slightest. Yeah, I'm serious. If they're going to do Springtrap, they have to make it accurate. Springtrap may have human eyes, but one thing I've learned from watching Five Nights at Freddy's, he doesn't care about the light. He's going to come at you regardless. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to come at the player and clap him. Him or her. Either way. Ayo, by the way. <laughs> but all I'm saying is they have to do Springtrap justice. 
I was absurdly disappointed. I love Xenomorph. After all odds, Xenomorph will always, I mean always, be my favorite. In the horror franchise. Because that thing's been... Has have... Has have... Has have... Is... Get on camera. I was about to slap myself. On camera. <sighs> Xenomorph has been flashed with flashlights 700 times in every movie. Maybe not in Resurrection. I don't remember. But in Alien 1, Captain Dallas used a light on the thing and it and it ended out horribly. He died to it. Same thing with the Xenomorph. If you po play if you point a light at it, it's just gonna scream at you and rip you and rip you to shreds. They need to start making their animal killers feel like animals. I know it's part of balancing to have a flashlight in the game, but they need to make it where the stun lasts less time. The stun starts and then stops abruptly. It starts to work, but it's visible. It's at least like 20% where you could see the survivor flashing the light in your face and then running away. That's, that's one of my nitpicks with Dead by Daylight. Not saying the game is bad by any means. I'm just saying I hate flashlights. Hate, and I mean absolutely hate the flashlight. It is absolutely overused. Yeah. The flashlight in Dead by Daylight. is overused. It was underused when it was introduced. And then it was overused. Because it got a thing where you could stun survivors with it. Or stun killers with it. That mechanic is one of the most rage-inducing mechanics a game could ever have. I get you can blind the animatronics in Security Breach, but I don't want them doing it to spring trap. Because it won't work. It doesn't work on him in the in the games. Or the movies. Yeah, in the video games of Five Nights at Freddy's, per, um, characters in the book series have used flashlights as ended out horribly as they're mauled to death by Afton. Afton moves back in FNAF 6 because of a flashlight. But, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't really work. Especially if the sound's on in FNAF 6. So, that is my, that is what I'm trying to say. They have to execute this chapter the right way. And not ban flashlights. Have flashlights disabled when the chapter first comes out. And I mean it, behavior. I mean it, behavior entertainment. I want you guys to preface this chapter. Make it feel like actual FNAF. And remove the flashlights. Make it feel like Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Where you have no flashlight. Have no light button suppressed. No flashlight to use. <clears throat> a signature flashlight is in FNAF of course. But it only works on Foxy. It doesn't work on Freddy. The flashlight does not work on any other animatronic. Except the mask in that game. Yeah. I'm serious. It's the same with Afton. Excluding FNAF 6. He cannot be blinded by anything. He will hit a person. If he gets the chance. And I'm serious. We've all seen what Afton's capable of. And if he's brought into Dead by Daylight, they need to execute it the right way. 
and have it where the animatronic can't be blinded. If they include a flashlight, they had better have it where he can't be blinded. Because that's why the Xenomorph gets underestimated. That's why Chucky gets over underestimated. Well, a lot of these killers in Dead by Daylight get underestimated because they can be blinded. But they have to preserve Springtrap in a good way. And I mean it. Springtrap would kill a person dead. Would unalive a person dead. In five seconds flat. In the original FNAF games. Because they're not watching. Their. Freaking. What's it called? Their um. The repairs and what not that they have to do. In the game. The repairs they have to do. To the ventilation. The cam systems. And everything else, and all, and all, and all three of those, they better include that. And in every map, if they do spring trap, they better include all the phantoms, all three phantoms: Phantom Mangle, Boxy, Puppet, Freddy, and BB. And they all have their different. Ways of distracting the player. They can. You cannot use flashlights on these things. I always find people. Who use flashlights stupid. Because. Technically. A player could still hit them. When they're blinded. If they're skilled enough. That's why I feel like. Dead by Daylight doesn't need a flat. Doesn't need flashlights anymore. Because flashbangs are underused. Why have flashlights when you have flashbangs? Am I right? Someone's got to agree with me in the comments about this. Like, I'm serious. Like, I am not playing games. I'm serious when I say this. They better. Make Springtrap blindless, where he cannot be blinded by anything. It just reflects the light off of his eyes. Because there's a verse in one of the DA game songs that says, His eyes are like magnets. Or his eyes are magnetic or something. And the and the spring bonnie suit that he's in has these rings around his eyes. Has these white rings around his eyes that make his eyes pop. I am not kidding when I say this. I'm serious. Like I am so serious. Behavior. I care about the the FNAF franchise's main antagonist. More than any other character. You guys, if you watch this, vi if you yeah, somehow, somehow graze this video, please, just please, make Springtrap not, and I mean not. I'm going in the camera when I'm being serious. I'm being serious. They better make it to where Springtrap is immune to flashlights. Because the Xenomorph has been blinded, has, been, has had light in its face, and it somehow killed Captain Dallas. Yeah, it somehow killed 
Captain Dallas in the first Alien. When Captain Dallas was shining a light on its freaking face. Same with the Demogorgon. It's had flashlights shined in its face before. I get Dead by Daylight wants to balance its killers and balance it to the to the way Dead by Daylight is, but yeah, yeah, I really want them to make a flashlight not work on spring trap. I want Spring Trap to have a passive ability where if you do put a flashlight to his face, he breaks the person breaks the survivor's arm. And they're left with a lifeless, limp arm for the rest of the game. I am not kidding. I am not kidding when I say that. I'm not. Not at all. I'm not kidding at all when I say that. <sighs> yeah, I'm not playing. And they better make it where Springtrap is, where Springtrap has the ability to jump scare the survivor, and they literally go stone. They go stiff. They literally freeze up as soon as he's right there. And they better make where his audio, where his um, mechanic from the original Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, the original FNAF. The, the original FNAF game that you know. William Afton's in, which is FNAF 3, his mechanic where he has, the, where you have to learn audio cues to understand where he's going. Or lure him around the restaurant. And here's a thought for that collab. People are saying, expecting one map. I th think that they're going to do multiple. They're going to do three restaurants. Three. Yeah, three restaurants. FNAF 1, FNAF 2, and then FNAF 3 with Hazardous Sprite. And maybe FNAF 4 if they're lucky, or FNAF 5. Not FNAF 6. That's too much to do. <laughs> but, because I've seen how they like to do their variants, their map variants, so they probably will do... Okay. They'll probably do F1... F2, F3, maybe F4, and F5. Why do I say F1? Why do I say the F keys on the keyboard? Those are more my way of saying the FNAF games. F1 is FNAF 1, F2 is FNAF 2, F3 is FNAF 3, F4 is FNAF 4, and F5 is FNAF 5. The same principle applies to FNAF. To FNAF 6 is F6, basically. That's my way of saying it, okay? That's my way of saying it. It's a lot easier than saying fun F a thousand times. <laughs> like, Scott should have said F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Because it sounds easier to say. Because it is. Because <laughs> it is easier to say. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, a lot easier to say. I'm going crazy in my mind about this. Man. But anyway, that's it from me. Hope catch you guys on the flip side.